An early cabin without a fireplace was a cabin without heat. So was a cabin with a fireplace that wouldn't draw. Both meant a long, cold winter. Or a smoky one. Bill Lamb laughed as he talked about the first chimney he ever built. It would smoke a possum out of the house. Building a chimney was not an easy job. If the throat wasn't exactly correct, the situation Bill described was the result. If the foundation wasn't set deep and firmly enough in the ground, the whole thing might tilt crazily away from the house. Sometimes they caught fire or a hard rain washed out some of the chinking and collapsed them. Bees often riddled the early mad chinking with holes in which they lived. Claude Darnell can remember passing chimneys and seeing smoke pouring from a hundred perforations in the chinking. The earliest, simplest chimneys were of creek rocks and filled stones and red mud mortar up past the throat. No matter how you made your chimney, the trick, of course, was to make it draw. The almost universal solution, as shown in the following diagrams, was to make sure of two things. The throat could be any size as long as the space behind and above it, the scotch back, was larger. The chimney should close down near the top to approximate the same dimensions as the throat. The top dimensions could be a little larger than the throat, but they should never be smaller. If they were, the chimney would be choked and would smoke. As long as these rules were followed, almost any design or elaboration could be employed within the chimney. It could twist, slope, slant or bulge inside have a ledge or depression behind the throat to catch ashes or water or other solid matters that might come down the chimney. Anything so long as it wasn't choked. <laughs>